Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. And if there is one major feature missing from Godot 4, it's a train system. Now, there is a proposal to create a train system in the future, but as we know how things work in the future is they take a while to get here because they're not in the present, they're in the future. Now, the good news is, in the meantime, there is a great option out there that was just released. It's called Train 3D. This is a Godot 4.x uh, GD extension. The nice thing about being GD extension is it should just work, and it should work with different versions quite easily. It's also written using C++, so it is quite uh, fast uh, for the most part. On top of that, uh, it uses geometric clip maps, the same technology as The Witcher. It allows you to create very large terrains that you can just basically stitch them all together. So you can create huge worlds. You can have up to 10 LOD levels or levels of detail being generated, up to 32 textures painted with. You've got sculpting, painting, texture detailing tools, etc. And you can import in height maps. Now, height maps can be created in a variety of different ways using a tool like World Machine, Unity or Unreal Engine, or H-Train. You can also paint them by hand, by the way. If you're interested in learning more about H-Train, well, good news. I actually did a video about H-Train in the past. Uh, in this video right here, uh, Training Godot walks you through how to use it to generate a height map. Now, this had a kind of uh, basic height map renderer, but the cool thing here is uh, you can actually use Train 3D uh, to render those height maps and get a, a much cooler result. So if you're interested in learning more, documentation is available online, but instead what we're going to do is jump right in and take a look at it. If you're curious, this is actually from the guys that are creating a game called Out of the Ashes. This is their own train system for their Godot Power 3D ARPG. So if you want to go ahead and check that out, it's from uh, Takasin Games, but this is available up on GitHub. Uh, it is under the MIT source code license. Uh, if you want to go ahead and grab it, basically go into releases, download this guy right here and add it in as an add-on folder and then enable it. So let's head on over to Godot and check it out. So you can see here, I've already enabled it. So project settings, plugins, you can see it is turned on right here, enabled. Uh, so then, so once that's done, uh, you can create Eight objects like this guy. This is a Terrain 3D object. It is an object of type Terrain 3D, predictably enough. And here you can see we're going to navigate through the Terrain demo. Uh, so I can fly around in this world. And yeah, so this is all generated using it. Obviously, you have a, a variety of train editing tools. You can see them all down the side over here. So when you've got a train object selected, the tools will be available right here. Normally, you would do things here. For example, you can raise the train. Here, you can lower the train. Like so. So if you want to create a valley beside a mountain, so there we'll go down. Here we will go up, like so. And then if you wanted to plateau off the train, you do have the option right there. You've also got expand, which basically is like, uh, you know, just bloats out the existing thing you've got. You've also got reduce, like so. Uh, you do have plateauing tools right here. So if you want to make this flat, you can make it there. So if you want to have a was that a mesa or basically a steep or a, a you know a tiered layer there? Uh, you could do so that way, and you've also got tools here for smoothing, kind of just getting rid of some of the sharp edges in your world. Uh, and then finally, you've got some painting tools. So you got two options for painting. You can paint with the texture like so. So let's want to do this rocky cliff here. I can just go ahead and paint it in like that, or we could do it this other way and spray paint it. So if I wanted to do a little bit, you know, more smooth. Obviously, you've got controls down here for the size of the thing that you are currently painting, like this. So again, switch back to the rock, like this. If you want to go ahead and create a new material, you go down here, and then you can edit it over here. You notice you can set it up with an albedo texture and a normal texture right there. So you can set up, create these however you wish, using the existing Godot uh, system. You've also got the ability to rotate the paint uh, bar brush that you want to have it there. And in essence, that is the crux of this guy. Now, there's sort of neat technology here. Remember I told you about the 1x1K um, stitching, like what you used in The Witcher? So here is a 1x1K segment. I've got this option over here. And what I can just do then is I can click, and now I have terrain over here. And it's seamless between them. So again, if I come here and we start, you know, if we just cross between those boundaries, I can instantly drag across right there. Again, you do have control over your brush here. So if you want to do a lot at once, you can do so here. Again, you can seamlessly cross between those boundaries. And if you want to cre keep creating more, basically just click into the region, and then now you can you can create your terrain out that way. So creating these tiled terrains is super simple. You can grow them out as you need uh, and just keep going that way as well. So I mentioned earlier on that this has the ability to bring in a height map, like what we saw from uh, H train or World Machine or somewhere else like that. Right now, it is not really built in flawlessly. Instead, it's in here in the add-ons folder 
go on down here, you're going to find tools and then importer. Just load this one up as a level and then select the importer over here. And then you're going to see you've got this simple tool here for importing and exporting in height maps. So if you created a train, you want to export it out, you could do so using the export functionality here. Or as you can see, you can bring in the height map over here. So the color file, uh, the height file name and so on. You can have it scale uh, and so on. So you've got this tool available here for importing things in. Um, and yeah, th this is ultimately going to be built in as more of an integrated tool at some point in the future. But right now, there's this cool importer option available uh, for this guy as well. And then the other cool thing you'll notice if you go in and check out the demo, there's also this guy right here. Now, there's not a lot going on here. And for some reason, the WAS controls for this demo don't work for me. But what this shows you is how to actually generate terrain using code. So again, it's supposed to have WASD controls, but I'm hitting those things and I'm not getting anything out of it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn collisions on, gravity on, and then we're just gonna fall down into the world right here. But that terrain that you see in front of you was actually generated using a noise texture. I'll, I'll show you exactly the code for doing that in just a second, but let's get on out of this particular demo. So what this shows or showcases is the fact that you can actually create your stuff procedurally. So here you can see the process of creating a terrain using code, just basically create a train 3 dnew uh, create the storage for it. This is where all the data actually goes. Give it a name, add it to your world. Uh, and here you can see the storage is being populated with noise. Add in a couple of different regions. So we've got four different regions here in different locations, all kind of relative offset locations there. Uh, then generate a noise texture there and you set that noise as the import image. So if you had a, a like a height map that you wanted to load it in externally, you could bring it in using this import images right there. And that is all you need to get the terrain up and going, which is pretty cool. So if you want to do things programmatically, there is this demo here that showcases you how to do it. But the entire thing can be written entirely and 100% by code. The other thing to remember, once again, you want to import in a height map. It's a bit of a hack for now, but there is this importer TSN script. And by the way, you can also see the logic behind it. So if you want to import something using code, uh, you can see the process available right here. It's very simple for, for the most part. But the tool here to get a hold of this guy to, to quickly import things in, there is that guy available here. So again, it's in tools underneath to so the train 3D inside of the add-ons. And that's kind of the extent of it. It's a very uh, cool project. Let's go back to 3D for a second here and let's go back to our demo. And you get an idea of exactly what you can do with it. Again, you can create these materials that have both normal maps and surface maps. Uh, for painting textures in your world, you can create, uh, I think it was, what did it say, 30 plus of these things as you go through. The other really nice thing with this tool, is even as I'm growing my train, uh, it can easily bridge across these different locations, which is cool, which also, by the way, applies to texture painting, which I, I can, is that texture paint? No, that's color paint. So if I go here, I can go across these boundaries. So here I am tiling across the four different maps. No problem, completely seamless. The performance is great. The other thing I didn't showcase here is we also have the ability to paint with a color and you can paint roughness. I'll show you roughness first. So here you can see the terrain that was brought up. I can select the roughness right here and we can do no roughness. So you can see it's going to get really shiny as a result or super rough. And then that's going to make it more, you know, coarse and rock like. And of course, you could go somewhere in the middle. So you do have the ability to paint roughness there. The other thing that you can do is come over here and just straight out paint a color. So, for example, I come down here, I pick this green and then you can just paint color in your world as well. So if you don't want to use a material, you do have the option to paint directly with colors if you wish as well. And then once again, with that, uh, this guy right here, you do also have the ability to do an export out. So if you want to save out your height map, your control map, or your color map that you've generated, uh, you can actually do that as well. So that is an option available. Uh, and yeah, that is Train 3D. Again, it's a GD extension written in C++, so it runs quite fast. The functionality is very nice. Really, the, one of the only things I see missing from this guy uh, is, for example, uh, holes. So the ability to cut holes into like voxelized caves and that kind of stuff, you would have to implement something to that degree. Uh, they do have a bit of a breakdown of where they're going with things. It's on their wiki, which I think is available here. Um, so the cool thing here is this will actually work with other uh, plugins that are out there. It should work with most of the Godot features that are available. It does work with um, collisions for physics, etc. And then it uh, will also work with height maps from various different places. Also, I will work with the uh, Hungry Proton Scatter plugin, which I covered at some point in the past. I'm going to revisit that guy in the future. And you can see some of the features that they're looking at the future. The one thing, again, I think is kind of missing right now is holes. We will see if holes come at some point in the future. 
Uh, scatter would cover the foliage placement, so that shouldn't be a big deal. Double precision floats, that's neat. Uh, so you can have very, very, very large worlds. Uh, but for the majority of people, you probably will not need 64-bit precision for your maps. 32-bit, you can still have quite a few locations for 32-bit uh, sized um, uh, coordinates in your world. Actually, that might even be 64 bits. So anyways, this probably isn't going to be a big deal for most people. I do think probably the area that most people will run into right away is holes. Uh, but very interesting. It's very much under development. This is considered an early release, but it is rock solid and super stable. So very cool. And if you like what they've done, check out their game. So it's uh, Takasin Games, and they're working on this for Out of the Ashes, an ARPG being created in Godot. So let me know what you think of uh, this plugin in general, Godot overall, and what you think and you want in a train system if it does it all for you and that's it also be sure to check out the h train for generating uh, height maps i will have that link down below as well all right i'll talk to you all later goodbye